Now, be it playing chess on the world stage or clashing sticks, in a game of hockey, the women of Iran are playing an increasingly bigger role in sport. While they always abide by the strict rules and codes of the Islamic Republic, many are using their sporting prowess to fly the nest, leave their homeland and see the world. Our bureau in Tehran have been to meet some of these Iranian women flying the flag for female sport. This is their focus report. She's only 19, but Sarah has travelled the world and just won third place at the FIDE Grand Prix in Russia. She looks like any other chess player, except for one thing. At every competition, Sarah must wear a veil, in keeping with the Islamic Republic's laws. Proud that Tehran is hosting the international chess competition in February, Sarah was disappointed when her American counterpart announced she wanted to boycott the event because she disagreed with wearing a veil. I can't judge the people who find it difficult to wear a veil. That's just how they feel. On the other hand, those who said that boycotting would help the Iranians are wrong in my opinion. For the first time, an international competition is taking place in Iran, and that will really encourage Iranian players. So in fact, not participating in this championship will have the opposite effect. Many of Sarah's fellow countrywomen feel that this tournament is the most important sporting event for Iranian women to date. Several of them have already begun to push their society's boundaries. These young women created the first female hockey team in Iran four years ago. They train after work, several evenings a week. And when they play abroad, they don't go unnoticed. The first thing that struck us during international competitions was really the looks we got from others. They were saying to each other, how were they able to play with their veils? And after the game, many would come up and ask us questions like, aren't you too hot with a veil? Doesn't it bother you? The truth is that we're here to play, to assert our rights, to show that we're here and we can play. With 13 years of hockey behind her, 27-year-old Bita would now like to see her team win a gold medal. She also dreams of competing in the Olympics. The director of the national hockey team has been with them the whole way. The girls are really pushing the boundaries in their country. They're the first to compete in international competitions. They've shown that wearing the veil doesn't restrain them or prevent them from succeeding on the national and international scene. They give hope to other girls in their country. And they also encourage them to play sports and lead a healthier life with positive energy and strong morale. Excelling in sport is one of the ways women have found to make a place for themselves in Iranian society, all while respecting the codes they grew up under. Iranian law technically forbids women from going into stadiums since 1979. But with the rise of female sport over the last decade, women have been allowed in, albeit not to watch or be watched by men. Nowadays, to flex their muscles, the athletes go abroad. For a lot of young people today, there's this idea you have to leave the country and see the world, that you have to connect with people around the world. Sport is one of the sure ways to get there. If you're a good sportsman or filmmaker or artist, you have a lot more opportunities to get into the international scene. That way you can meet different people from other countries doing the same thing as you. At last August's Olympic Games in Rio, Kimia Alizadeh was the first Iranian woman to win a medal, a feat that was roundly hailed by the country's authorities, from the most conservative to the reformist Iranian president.